And one of the things that, that you've talked about before, even with the pre-app process, and I've seen you do this multiple times, piloting, piloting something before it becomes like the new, Correct. the new status quo before that gets transformed and made even that much better going forward. How has piloting things been helpful for you? And really probably I'd say helpful for others because it's, it's that incremental steps. It's that incremental grow growth moving in the right direction without we'll call it we're going to get something 80 percent there and and what seth godin talks about in some of his talks is we just got to ship it like like just get it out get it 80 percent there keep that standard of excellence to use your words but we still have to ship and not get bogged down in perfectionism how do you communicate that to others who might be perfectionist by default kind of like i am so that's an excellent question. Um, I would like to say that the pre app process has kind of been the framework. Why I see it as our biggest digital win is a framework for basically all of our piloting programs and how we continue to elevate and, and optimize those things. The way that uh, the piloting part of that process has worked is that you kind of, it's kind of a cheat code, if, if, if I can call it that. You pilot it with a smaller project or a smaller team get them to see the benefit of it, and then you create them as your internal advocates for why something works. You roll it out, and then and internally, when it's just something marketing-related, I'm not working with another team, roll it out on one product line. We start with, uh, I think I started the pre-op process with new autos only. We captured that, went great, and then we moved on to credit card. Well, at that point, you're now create your work is creating your argument for you. So you go back to those perfectionists. And I said I work for an excellence driven organization. So if they hear launch at eighty percent and we'll get to twenty percent later, that initially to the ears it's like, No, we can't do that. That's how we operate. But when you do that and that doesn't say sacrifice the excellence and, and, and the hard work. When you get it to a place that's workable and approved, then you can let your work create the case and the argument for them to say, hey, look, this is how we've rolled it out thus far. This is the success of it. Let's roll it out here, and then we'll add it, add things to this original uh, first piloted program. Uh, think, that's kind of how it's worked out for me. I think that's a big, big difference than how many financial brands traditionally have operated <laughs> And something that you've brought to the table is being able to prove and quantify time and time and time and time again, the value that marketing is creating for the organization. Because I, I hear it right. from financial marketers every single day. I'm a I'm I'm a cost center. Um, I'm I'm a glorified in-house FedEx Kinkos. I'm I'm kids that play with paint and crayons. <laughs> But quantifiably, you're proving value day in and day out. What has been some of those quantifiable wins beyond, yeah, we're, we're making progress, we, we're, we're checking things off the list, and we're optimizing them, but how are you proving the value of marketing? Because that's one thing, if, if financial marketers can solve that problem, they can start writing their own checks. Well, I think uh, some examples of quantifiable proof um, – Last year, we had a corporate goal to um, bring in deposits, and initially it was seen as this big lofty thing that honestly, to just we have honest conversations with ourselves internally, like this is lofty goal, guys, I don't know if we're going to meet it. So I, I kind of put a big ask out there. I was like, hey, what if we implement the pre-app process and we tie that with digital leads on Facebook, and um, we tie these assets that we know that we're really good at doing and we just put it out there. Um, so I can say over the course of the year 2019, I think we bought in between the, th the three or four deposited campaigns about 16 million and the goal was 20. So in addition to the other campaigns and, and things that were going on and of course the frontline staff and the call center bringing in money, we actually met the goal that we were expected not to meet because we trusted the process. We tested it, we proved it, we trusted it, and we were able to put data points behind that and say, hey, look, it's working. Let's keep doing it. Um, and it just comes with establishing that trust with leadership. And just really, it's, it's exciting to see those things come together. And like, you're like, okay, you've accepted in your heart, hey, this may or may not work, but I'm willing to try. I'm willing to give it all I got. And then when it actually pans out, it's like, oh, sweet, this is awesome. We actually did it. And I think another key lesson hearing you dialogue and talk through this is 
big lofty goals, but we start to break those down into smaller bite-sized chunks. Melinda May, eat the well, mm -hmm. bite by bite, working through not a, a, a yearly strategy because we have to be agile. We have to be nimble when market opportunities come up, but the perspective of like 90 days, this is what we're going to focus on over the next 90 days has helped to communicate internally like this is what we're going to do now and then we'll worry about everything once we get to the next 90 day sprint more or less